one. We're looking at uh, differentiation, and of course we're going over the basic rules. This, uh, <clears throat> this video is going to be over the power rules. We're working our way right on down. And of course we found now ways to uh, shortcut methods to finding these derivatives without having to use the, uh, the definition um, using that limit process to find the derivative. Okay, so this particular one here is the power rule. Let's look at the function m of x is equal to x to the third power. Now here's one that we haven't done. Okay, So what does the power rule state? Well, <clears throat> we'll write it generally here, but we're not going to do any proving, obviously. Um, that's beyond the scope of this class. But uh, what we're going to do is look at the, uh, let's see if you can see the pattern. Patterns are pretty actually pretty easy to see trying to find these uh, derivatives using I call the shortcut method. We don't want to use capital X. That would be uh, something we'd use as a random variable in statistics. All right, the power rule. So we're going to take the derivative of this guy. Well, let's see if you can see the pattern. It's 3x squared. See a pattern? Let me work another one. What if we had y is equal to 7x squared? And we're asked to find y prime. So if you're asked to find y prime, that means you need to take the derivative. All right, Let's see if you can see the pattern. 14x. Oh, just 14x. See a pattern yet? Do you see a pattern? All right, let's try this one. I was going to throw out all the different types of notation. d over dx. And this one will be, let's say, x to the seventh power. Imagine doing this using the, the definition of the derivative. That's that limit process. Let's see if you can see a pattern. See a pattern yet? Well, if you don't see a pattern, let me help you. What we're doing here is we're taking whatever the power is up here and we're bringing it out front. It now becomes it's the coefficient of x and we're subtracting 1 from this power, so that gives us a 2. Pretty simple, right? So take the 2, bring it out front, 2 times 7 is 14, so now the coefficient of x becomes 14, and of course we subtract 1 from that 2. See that? Once again, we take this power, bring it out front, now the coefficient is 7, and we subtract 1 from the power, which now becomes 6. I don't know. How simple is that? Right? So more generally, you know what? I think I'll just copy this. We have x raised, x raised, uh, raised, raised, raised to the n power is equal to, so we take the n, bring it out front, right, rewriting the x, and raise that to the n minus 1, to the n minus 1. Now, there needs to be quite a few things said here that we're not going to be getting uh, into the details on this. And that is that n is a rational number. Okay? n's a rational number. So remember what rational numbers are. Uh, they're fractions, or they're fractions that can be reduced 
um, to uh, integers, or we may say natural numbers, but a rational number, in other words, like a half, and maybe that's probably something we need to do. Maybe we should do that. Okay, but what I was going to say is that n is a rational number, and that the function f of x is equal to x to the n must be differentiable, and of course, this is true here, right? There's some other things that need to be said about this, but we're going to leave it at that. But I let's let's work. Uh, let's go ahead and, and work one with a with a fraction up there in the power. All right. So we'll let uh, n be. If you don't mind, I'll write it like this right here. How's that? half is equal to now we're going to bring the half out front okay bring the half out front x raised to it's going to be I'm going to put this in parentheses half minus one okay you see that so when we go to reduce this thing down and I guess it would be best that I wrote this thing as a fraction and so we're going to end up with x on top, and of course the power, a half, what's a half minus one, right? A half minus one is, a negative a half, A second think about that whoops and then what uh, what goes down here well it just be a two see that and of course we can uh, rewrite this putting that not writing it with uh, negative exponents but writing it with positive exponents and taking that down into the bottom which ends up becoming one over two times the square root of x two times the square root of x okay so that's the power rule. It's pretty simple. All right, pretty simple. We'll, uh, we'll go over some more examples on this because now we can put the power rule and the constant rule together as one.